Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hello and welcome to Harvest. On today's show, he was a highly successful businessman when a wrong decision nearly cost him his marriage. Leadership coach Ford Taylor opens up about godly correction and how it saved his family. And we kick off a powerful teaching this week about the meaning of success with Pastor Mark Lance in today's moment, Pitfalls or Promises. Good things coming your way on today's Harvest. Want to say thanks for joining us today. Good to see you, Val. Good to see you, Stephen. And it's a heat wave as the song, was that uh, the... Uh, I don't... One Diana Ross and the Supremes, was it? I, was it the Supremes? Yeah, yeah. a right. voice in my head just Talking said about the a heat Supremes. Wave. Yeah, hot <laughs> okay. across the nation and hot in Phoenix, Arizona, where yes. uh, Greg Laurie, evangelist Greg Laurie, I think one of our nation's leading evangelists for mm -hmm. sure, uh, came out of the Calvary Chapel movement with Chuck, Chuck Smith, Smith, hosting what has been billed as the nation's w uh, largest one-day evangelistic outreach last year in Dallas. Uh, they drew 82,000. Uh, don't have the, the reports yet about what took place at the University of Arizona uh, a couple days ago, but expected to be a, a sellout, a full-out crowd there to hear the gospel. That's right. You know, it kind of reminds me of this, like, modern-day Billy Graham crusade-type event. I mean, he has an amazing message. He's an amazing communicator as well, very mm -hmm. effective in his presentation. Just the pure gospel, the fact that Jesus came, that he died, and he was resurrected yes. for our sins. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the message. And some 80, what, thousand people, 82,000 well, uh, people? That was in Dallas, but uh, right. th this year is expected to at least uh, at least match that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the purpose uh, was, as, as uh, Greg Laurie says, he says, I want to talk to people who are asking the question, why am I here? What am I living for? We are all just people searching. And he's got a very... Uh, down to earth style of communicating just connects with people and uh, also um, a new project that he's coming out with mm -hmm. I think it launches just uh, in a day or two basically a biography on and the title is King of Cool the biography <laughs> of, of Steve McQueen and specifically his last days prior to uh, passing from mesothelioma where mm -hmm. uh, the legend has it that he was clutching Billy Graham's Bible on his chest in the hospital room. And you know, I'm glad this book is coming out, especially for the Steve McQueen fans, you know, who did not get a chance to know this about his life. Mm -hmm. And that's what Greg Laurie says he wants to do. He wants to wrong that right. He wants yes. to make it clear yeah. that this man was a man of faith. He was a Christian and um, he wanted his faith to be known as he uh, mm -hmm. performed as an actor throughout Hollywood. Yeah, and uh, much of the content coming from uh, McQueen's uh, wife, Barbie, as well as mm -hmm. his pastor at the time, his flight instructor, uh, some of the medical community that, that served him. And uh, his pastor said that uh, statement that McQueen had made, Steve McQueen had made, was, quote, my only regret in life that I was not able to tell others about what Jesus did for me. And Laurie said that when he, when he heard that from the pastor's mouth, that's when he decided uh, uh, that's a wrong that needs to be righted. But uh, really interesting, uh, just s some of the things coming out of this out of this uh, story of, of Steve McQueen, just two months prior to being di diagnosed with uh, mesothelioma, which is what, what took his life right. at age 50, uh, he really sold out and... Uh, got himself lined up right with God and, and lined up right with this with the world around him and uh, was a, a, a firebrand of a witness to those in his immediate circle uh, during those last days. That's right and I think what was very telling about his story is the fact that other people poured into his life which you know mm -hmm. makes the point this is the point the gospel is a great message but not if no one has heard it from you right. you have to share the gospel you have to tell people and become disciples that's what Jesus said and must have been really important to him Stephen on his way yeah ascending into heaven last the last, last words, words you know he, on he earth did, right yeah. when a person is leaving you the what's important are those last words that they say to you he said go out and to make disciples of all nations yeah. and so steve mcqueen was discipled and then he turned around and became a disciple yeah absolutely another gentleman uh, matt cullen from the pittsburgh penguins congratulations to the penguins yes. winning their second stanley cup uh, two years in a row here, but uh, great story that we'll have on our Facebook page as well from Fellowship of Christian Athletes, a little bit about Matt Cullen mm -hmm. and the role that faith plays in his life to keep him grounded. Uh, and the fact that, uh, like, like you said, 
you know, our, as Matt sees it, as we all see it, our purpose goes beyond what mm -hmm. we do. That's right. Our, our, it, it, our vocation is more than just what we do. It's, it's basically our calling in ministry as well. That's right. A shout out to my team. My team won last night. There you the Golden go. State Warriors. I had to get that in. Well, there you go. Hey, listen, we'd love to connect with you today. You can join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and live at lacy.com. That is our email address right here on the set. World News with Chuck Freebie coming up next. On this Tuesday, June 13, 2017, here's what's happening in your world. A mass food poisoning at a camp for displaced people near Mosul has killed at least two people and sickened over 700. The food provided by a non-governmental organization was meant for an iftar, a meal which Muslims use to break their dawn to dusk fasting during Ramadan. A woman and a girl have died. At least 300 people remain in critical condition. Again, we don't know where the contamination happened, whether it was in the packaging, in the preparation, in the transportation. The meals were allegedly distributed by a Qatari charity known as Raf. Qatar is currently engaged in a diplomatic dispute with four Arab nations over its support of terrorist organizations. As for the battle for Mosul, which Iraqi armed forces have achieved significant progress in, their biggest challenge still lies in the rescue of civilians. Hassan was a resident of a recently liberated neighborhood in Mosul's West Bank. He says the battle in the area lasted for a very long time, during which his families could only hide away and pray, hoping the army would come and rescue them soon. There are many white flags hanging outside residential buildings in that region. Soldiers say the flags indicate those civilians are inside waiting for rescue. An eight-story building has collapsed in a low-income area of Nairobi and 10 people are missing. We are doing search and risk operations to see whether we'll get lives. And as I believe the, the, the building is, we may get people alive if indeed they're in that building. After eight buildings collapsed and killed 15 people in Kenya in 2015, President Uhuru Kenyatta ordered an audit of all the county's built or country's buildings to see if they're up to code. While the National Construction Authority has found that 58% of the buildings in Nairobi are unfit for habitation. The Attorneys General of Maryland and the District of Columbia say they are suing Donald Trump, alleging he violated the Constitution by taking payments from foreign governments as president of the United States. Much of the lawsuit focuses on alleged violations of the so-called emoluments clause of the Constitution. It's based on Republican President Trump's real estate holdings. The clause prohibits the president and other government employees from accepting foreign gifts and payments without congressional approval. And Dennis Rodman, the former NBA bad boy who has palled around with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, flew back to Pyongyang today for the first time during the Trump presidency. He says he's just trying to open a door on a mission that he thinks his former celebrity and apprentice boss would support. Rodman has received the red carpet treatment of four past trips since 2013, but he's been roundly criticized for visiting during a time of high tensions between the U.S. and North Korea over the weapons programs. Coming up later, Pastor Mark Lance has today's connections, but up next, leadership coach Ford Taylor opens up about godly correction and how it saved his family. We're right back with that story after this. Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. Ford Taylor is the founder of Transformational Leadership, and he once owned a business worth $300 million. He's known in the business world as the fixer because he would fix broken companies, but God is also using him to fix broken lives. Welcome back to The Harvest Show, Ford. Valerie, thank you so much for having me back. Oh, man, the fixer. Well. <laughs> I mean... You know, owning a business worth millions of dollars, you obviously had to do something right. So kind of tell us about your business, um, your business background and how God has merged that with the marketplace 
to produce leaders around the world? Well, as you know, my, my background was mainly doing turnarounds, going into broken companies and fixing them. Uh, we had a success rate pretty high on doing that, not knowing that what we were doing was actually biblical principles. Mm -hmm. And so I was applying these principles in the company with the people in our company, but as we talked about on the last show, I wasn't necessarily applying them in my personal life. In your personal life. And, and on the uh, previous show, you talked about how you fell, you know, went through sexual temptation, how, you know, you had to ask your wife for forgiveness and, and you got that, your life back together. It's interesting how when our private lives line up, God will then use those same principles that we apply to our private lives to our public lives. So right. kind of talk about that. There should, it should be seamless, shouldn't it? Yeah, we shouldn't have to worry about what we're doing sitting right here on this show, what we're doing at home, or what we're doing at work, or at church, mm -hmm. or ministry, or sports. If we're the same person in all those categories, and all those areas, uh, the stress goes down. Uh, one of the things, I t one of the principles that you were asking about is that I teach is that if our ideal self, who we put ourselves out to be, or even who we aspire to be, is not lined up with who we really are, that's directly related with the amount of stress we have in our lives. Oh, wow. And the more stress, the more our serotonin's hit, our dopamine, our adrenaline system gets out, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we're saying or acting or doing things that are counter to what we may say our belief system is. So talk about transformational leadership, some more of those principles because, um, well first, let's start with this. this, is a very elementary question. What is leadership or what is the making of a leader? Well, I believe if you have influence with at least one person, <laughs> that makes you a leader. Okay. So we're all leaders. One human being, not just the puppy, right? One human being. I'm sorry, <laughs> dogs don't work. I mean, actually at some level, I guess you're even a leader there. But in a, I call an organization as any time two or more people are in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so all of us at some level have influence, leadership with some kind of organization. So there's the starting point. It can be a husband and wife. It can be a family, a company, a church. You ready? A mm -hmm. city or even a nation. And, and wow, and we, can, and we can have influence in all of those areas. You know, I remember Ford actually praying. I don't know if it was arrogant of me, but praying and asking God to give me more influence so that I could, you know, win more people to him. Is that okay to do? Absolutely. I mean, he says, I mean, God's word's very clear. If you humble yourself, I'll exalt you. If you exalt yourself, I'll take your head off. No, he says, <laughs> I'll humble you. And so why is it a, a bad principle? I, I pray every day, God, give me the courage to be humble and the humility to be courageous. And talk about it, not just in corporate America, but say a father, you know, at home, he's a leader, but he's not a leader just because he says it 10 times. I mean, you, you have to have some skills uh, to lead a family. So talk about just in any area becoming a great leader. Right. Well, Valerie, one of the, can I answer another question that will lead into that? Yes. Is that okay? Sure. Uh, I, I believe we have a leadership crisis in okay. our country. And a lot of us say it's in the government, but I believe it's in the church, it's at home, it's with moms and dads. And I believe the foundation of that crisis is we've come to believe or be more concerned about what people think of us that follow us than we do care about them. And I think that even goes to mom and dad. So for example, a dad, to answer your question, if he's not transparent with his children, can you imagine what it was like for me to share with my children what I had done and I almost destroyed our family? Wow. Because I don't want them to get to that place in their life where maybe they have that temptation later when they're married. I want them to know they have someone they can talk to. I'm gonna want their husbands to know, if you ever come up against that temptation, just don't go there. It's painful, call me, well, I'll help you work through it. Mm -hmm. And so a good leader, if they're walking in transparency and vulnerability, they're gonna be able to help a lot of people with whatever they've learned, their good stuff and their bad stuff. So how do you share your information? Do you have gatherings? Do you do conferences to talk about transformational leadership? Right, well, we do transformational leadership conferences in different cities and states where people can come to live events. Because of the fact that the way the brain works, and not being able to remember that stuff compacted that quickly, we've developed an online platform called TL On Demand that people can continue to get what they got at the live conference. So they can get that whether they go to the live conference or not. What do you start with? What's the, when they go online or when they show up at a conference, what's the first thing you tackle? Well, the first thing we tackle is the four levels of change uh, because transformation comes from the Greek word metamorpho, which is change from something to something else. Now, I already told you one of my stories where I change 
from a man who, in faith who went to church a lot and changed the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. So we talk about the four levels. And the first one is new knowledge. If we, we have to have new knowledge to have change. The second one is our attitude. Uh, our emotions come into play with attitude. So if we have new knowledge and attitude, you know, our thoughts and our feelings are connected. But from those two, that's what causes our behavior, our action. So the first three levels are individual change, and the fourth level is organizational or cultural change. And that's when three to five percent, we say 15 because of our uh, experience, the research shows three to five, people coming together with a common vision, pulling on the rope the same direction, they can shift the culture of any organization, a marriage, a family, even a nation. I mean, that's really powerful. Sometimes when I think, you know, just, I'm just too small. I mean, I'm, you know, who am I? I'm, I'm speaking for the person who's watching today saying, I'm just a stay-at-home mom or, you know, I'm just a grandparent at home and I sing in the choir. Can I really have that kind of impact on the world? And you say. The, the answer is absolutely yes. If you impact your kids and they impact their friends, mm -hmm. absolutely, you have that kind of impact on the world. Okay, so share, um, besides yourself, uh, a success story with us from someone who's attended one of the events. Well, uh, give me an example of a client who attended and we took their executive team through it. And this client was losing, for example, th they were losing about $250,000 a month uh, and the bank was gonna close them down in seven weeks. They brought us into their company to work with them. And in, in that seven weeks, they went from losing 250,000 a month to making 250,000 a month. And so people would call that success. But this same client uh, who two brothers ran the company and there were other siblings, they had never heard their father say, I love you and I'm proud of you wow. at 80 years old. Mm -hmm. And so they now had the tools on how to, the CEO, how to approach his father and restore that reconciliation. And in a board meeting, which I became a part of, the father told them all how proud he was of them and he loved them and they'd never heard that before. So you tell me which one's the most success. Oh, wow. I mean, that's so powerful that you can use the skill set that you gain um, at the event and apply it to your private life. And that's what God wants us to do. That's what I said, that's what I meant by that our lives should be seamless. Right. Um, what about transformational leadership in the Bible? Who's a character in the Bible? <laughs> well, Paul's a good example. Oh, I perfect. Mean, you know, one right. who actually was a Christian killer mm -hmm. and, you know, became a person who wrote a lot of the Bible. David's a good one, a man who chased after God's own heart yet he still struggled with sexual temptation. Uh, there, there are all kinds, almost every world changer in the Bible, if you'll notice, is actually a, a business type person mm -hmm. and they've had a personal transformation with God. Would you, what would you say to a person who's struggling, who's probably had sexual temptation or uh, some other issue and that person just feels so down and feel like they're worthless and they don't know how to pick themselves up? What do you say? Well, I would say to them to do what I had to do. Okay, just look in your camera and tell them okay. that. <laughs> uh, I would say to you, there is hope. Uh, right now, you probably believe that there's nothing you can do to come out of this. But the key is you got to tell somebody. You got to share with somebody what you're doing with, what you're dealing with. Share with somebody if you know somebody who's dealt with that, because there is hope. Because God is bigger than any thought that you may have around yourself. I believed that there's no way that I could ever have influence, even after I knew this material was in the Bible, because I thought, who would listen to me after what I've done? Being sexually abused at six years old, cheating on my wife, all those things that made me believe I was a different person than who Jesus said I am. But th there's hope, there's a way to pull out of whatever you're in right now, and hopefully you'll be able to do that too. Amen. Thank you so much for the, some great insight. To connect with Fort Taylor, go to TL On Demand. That stands for Transformational Leadership. OnDemand.com, or you know the drill, go to harvest-tv.com for more on transformational leadership. Harvest continues in just a moment. The gastrointestinal tract is one of the most fascinating systems in the human anatomy. It powers the body with energy by converting food into fuel. To keep your GI tract functioning strongly, order the new Restoration Pack by making healthy choices. For just $59.95, you get certified organic inulin, probiotic blend plus, liquid multigels, and mineral concentrate plus free shipping. To order, go online or call 1-800-965-2345. Your body will thank you. 
Hi, this is Stefan Radulich with Feed the Hungry, and I want to encourage you to become a Full Life Monthly Partner today. Why is that so important? Well, because children like these children at the Kiriandongo Refugee Camp come to school every day for a hot meal. For all of these kids, this is the best meal they're going to have. For many of them, it might be the only meal that they have on a given day of any month. Because of your monthly support, we can make a monthly commitment to schools like this. It takes $6 a month to take care of one child, so maybe today you can make that $6 a month commitment, or 12 or 18 or Maybe you can make a commitment of $30 or $60, and for doing that, I want to say thank you and God bless you. Please act now. These children need your encouragement. They need to know they are not alone. Please call 1-877-769-9270 or visit feedthehungry.org to help a child know how good a full life feels. Well, there's a massive difference between knowing what to do and doing what you know. You know, I found so many people, including myself at times, we know that God's planted something in our heart. There's this strong urgency, a desire to follow what we would say is a heavenly inspired dream. You can articulate it, you can write about it, you can put the plan on paper, but yet here you are in the same place you were a year ago and nothing's changed. It still remains only a desire. It still remains just written notes on the page of a journal that is dated a year ago or maybe even longer than that. Listen, my friend, it's time to make a change. It's time to stop dreaming and start doing. So I want you to turn in your Bibles to Numbers chapter 13 because you're going to find in that chapter a group of dreamers, the Israelites. They were people whose dream was about to come true because they'd just been rescued from one of the worst nightmares that anybody could ever imagine. They'd been held as a slave by a ruthless and a cruel dictator who had required them to build his empire with absolutely nothing given to them in return. And now God had miraculously delivered them out of Egypt. He was offering them the most beautiful, the most prosperous land in the world to live in as a reward and as their inheritance. So look with me in verse 27 of Numbers 13. The Bible said, as they came into the land, they said, we came to the land where you sent us. And yes, it flows with milk, it flows with honey, and this is the fruit of it. So they saw the dream, they saw the promise, but now what shocks me is the very next verse. Look at this in verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. You know what? I want to bring this thought down to a very practical level. This land that God had prepared for the Israelites, Canaan, it can be representative of two things in your life, the potential of your life and the promises of God for your life. You know you have potential of seeing those promises fulfilled in your life. So then why don't people just step out? Why don't they do what they're dreaming about? I believe it's for the same reason that these Israelites never reached their destiny. They never walked into Canaan. Here it is. Instead of seeing the potential, they saw the pitfalls. Instead of looking at the grapes, they saw the giants. Listen, friend, you've got to know that any time that you've got potential and any time that you have promises that are presented to you, problems and pitfalls are not far behind. So my question is, what are you looking at today? Are you looking at the promises or are you only looking at the problems? Have the pitfalls become so overwhelming that you can no longer see the promise of what lies ahead? I just want you to know there's no reason for you to stay on this side of Canaan, on this side of your promise. It's time today to jump over the pitfall, jump over the problem, and by the grace of God, walk into the promise that he's given to you. Mm, thank you so much, Pastor Mark. Good word, good, good word. word, very timely. And you know, it really comes down to a matter of perspective, mm -hmm. what we choose to look at. And right. whether we, you know, if you look all throughout the scripture where we say to magnify the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, make, make the Lord the big thing that you see. And uh, the mountains that you see are just uh, stepping stones. Absolutely. And so many times what we do, our negative psyche kind of kicks in. Anytime that we have an opportunity, that opposition becomes so big. And if we're not careful, we look at that opposition instead of the opportunity. And I really feel like God is wanting us to get past that mm -hmm. and see the ability he's given us by his grace. And when you look at in modern times, you know, 
Pastor Mark, an entire generation of Israelites did mm -hmm. not enter into the promised land. And that's how it is in our own lives that many of us, God has made promises to us, but we will probably not walk in those, in those promises and take hold of those and live out what God is calling us to do because we see, we see the negative all mm -hmm. the time instead of trusting him, you know, to see God can make a way in, in dry places. He can do it. So we need to trust him, don't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. And the statement you just made is so true. The generation missed out because of the decision of mm -hmm. a few men. We don't realize how important yes. our decisions are. They affect not just us, but those who follow us and are around us. And there were a couple of guys who took in the next generation. Though. Absolutely, Joshua and Caleb. They were the only two that said, hey, we can do this, we've yeah. got they, this. They, they flipped the script. They did. Rather than saying, nevertheless, the giants are big. They said, well, the giants are big, but God has you given <laughs> them to us as you food. Yes. You know, and so it's really a matter of perspective. Today, flip that script in your own mind, in your own internal dialogue. Let your spirit man arise and take advantage of this moment to start fresh and new to walk into your promised land, the things that God has promised you. Thank you for joining us on Harvest. We'll see you tomorrow. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the C Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the C Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. The C Broadcasting partners in faith make it possible for millions to hear the word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help the C Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. When Dr. Lester Summerall founded LaCie Broadcasting decades ago to tell hurting people about Jesus, he knew they would need prayer. So he opened the International Prayer Line. Today, tens of thousands of callers a month receive life-changing prayer from our dedicated volunteers. But we need your help to expand the work of this vital ministry. Won't you consider partnering with Prayerline with a monthly gift of $25? Your donation will help us reach the world. Call today.